Mark Campbell. I represent Subdivision 1, Dorantosh, Good Soil, and Pierceland. I'm Charles Stein. I'm Subdivision 4, Turtle for Live Long and Merlin. Glenn Winkler, City of Meadow Lake. John Anderson, Division 6, Nate Stone, Lasica, and Peyton. Dwayne Hope, Director. Jessica Fischer, Fly Dust. Brian Gabry, Board Chair, and represent the Paradise Hill St. Walter. Uh, Faith Graham, Vice Chair, uh, Lashburg, Marsden, and Dealbrook. Barb Seymour, City Middle Lake. Moon Lake, Rapid View, Maqua, and Rural Middle Lake. Janice Villarshan, Vaughn, Egam, and Rossland. Okay, so uh, we're here to uh, review the education governance uh, review that was done by Dan Friends. Uh, met the panel today, so that was quite interesting. We presented some information. I'm hoping everybody got uh, this paper on both sides here. Uh, this is stuff we're going to go through. Uh, it's got the first page, Education and Governance Review, and uh, reasons why the provincial wants to make changes. Uh, there's four options here. We'll all try and go through this here before the end of the night. But we'll pass this on to Glenn Winkler. All there's all no Glenn from uh, being the director here and now as the board chair or board uh, representative from Middle Lake. Take it away. You're the chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, just the, the frame behind me, I hope reads the parents' report. They talk about four options. Something that as you sit and listen to us, need to recognize is that you're probably talking to a pretty biased <coughs> group of presenters here. We all have the one vantage point. We're directly involved in education. We're committed to it. We spend a lot of time trying to promote it. And we certainly understand that there may be people in this room or pe certainly people in the province who want to take a different look at education. And that's fair enough. Um, we're, we're sitting in one chair and we understand there's other points of view that need to be recognized. In the parents' report, and if you are mystified by our presentation and you want to get it all clarified, it is available online, um, 29 pages or so, and you can go into that and you can read in more detail what is in here. I'm just going to highlight a few different things. As they look at transformational change, they're, they're talking about really four options and in the report excuse me in the report he identifies both challenges and benefits of each one and certainly they would they're very unique and they would be viewed differently by different people the first is having well if you watch the news and health you'd have one provincial public board of education there's a bit of a fly in the ointment in that the catholic the, the 10 separate boards are protected under the Constitution and they cannot be amalgamated. So they can't eliminate them. So if they went with one board, that would only be for the public boards of education and our neighbors, sometimes inside coterminous boundaries like Saskatoon and Regina, they would still be running with elected boards and, or they'd have a, their own individual school division. So keep in mind there's a possibility for two systems. Obvious advantage that I see for that is if you're sitting in the government chair and you want control, one school division that you appoint the people and you've got control. Because if you don't do what you're told, there will be a new appointment. So it's very easy that way. Uh, obvious disadvantage for us as we see it would be your democratic right to elect people to run your school division would be lost. And if you're not happy with us, Every four years you get a chance to sh indicate that and elect new people. So there's more than those advantages and disadvantages mentioned, but that's an obvious one with, with the one provincial. Option two is four regional school divisions. So you would have four, I would imagine they cut the province into four, or they may go Regina, Saskatoon, North, South. Again, the details are missing, and often the devil's in the details, so it's tough for us to say that one looks really good or that's ridiculous because we don't have those details. Um, and, but 
and that would be kind of as you go down that slope of control and democracy, it depends if they're elected or appointed, that option is there in all of the options, the four options that the parents report puts out. They could appoint or they could hang on to elected boards. Option three has A and B to it so that you would have um, eight to 14 public school boards and then you'd still have the 10. And that would be very minor changes. There are some one school school divisions, a total of four in the province, I think. Maybe that's the target. Uh, Isla Cross, Theodore, Creighton, Engelfeld and, Creighton. and Engelfeld are small school divisions with one school. And that, again, they would view it differently, but there might be some ground there that they want to make changes just on that. And then the 3B would be small realignment of existing boundaries. We were asked the question today by the committee, when they did the amalgamation 10 years ago, did it make sense? Were there some shopping patterns or people work patterns that they, you got the wrong people in your division, it would make more sense if something was different. Uh, we have a provincial border, so that kind of eliminates one side of our problem. We have a provincial park across the top, so that kind of eliminates another area. So really you're looking at at the south, should we have Spiritwood or you know, or should Glasgow be in a different division? So that was a question asked, and maybe they'll try to fine tune and fix the mistakes that were made in the last am amalgamation. I think Faith indicated that we've been at it for 10 years, it was uncomfortable, we were trying to make it work. Uh, I think uh, the teaching staff and people are are okay with where we're at and they work hard and we've forgotten we're on to back to kids back to education back to trying to make things happen so i don't know if they'll tinker with that so as a parent and chair of jonas samson sec i have many concerns about this report i'm particularly concerned about option one where we would see a single appointed non-elected board it's been my experience over several years to have our locally elected board members, like Barb and Terry, in our case, attend our SEC meetings and discuss the priorities of the school division and the province, and then to hear our concerns and our achievements within our schools. So we're working together at the local level in the best interests of the children in our community. And I believe that you, as board members, are not here for a paycheck or a per diem. I think you're here because you're passionate about our kids, and you're passionate about making a difference in our community. And personally, I want to thank you for that. So my fear is that some government-appointed individual from Saskatoon or Regina, who has no connection to my community, or this will be making decisions about our children on a purely statistical basis. Maybe they decide our class sizes should be bigger, without understanding some of the unique needs that we have here compared to other communities. Or maybe they say, well, there aren't enough kids in some of our little schools to warrant keeping them open. Maybe they decide to eliminate band programs or money for extracurricular activities for like basketball or track and field. And the basis of that fear can be found on page five of Mr. Perrin's report under Boards of Educational Responsibility. So if I may, I just want to read them. So it says boards are responsible for making budget decisions for the funding they receive and ensuring accountability, establishing procedures for the management and supervision of schools, providing and maintaining schools, equipment and facilities, determining policies for staffing, including the number of teachers and other staff, determining the grades offered in a school and the size of classrooms, determining the programs that are offered, and their examples here are French immersion and band, and making decisions about busing and transportation. So, we've seen the number of school divisions decrease from 99 to 28. So my question is uh, to you is, has the government shared with you any information on what cost savings have been achieved in this previous amalgamation? And have they indicated what cost savings that they're anticipating in a further amalgamation? Meeting with the panel today, um, they didn't offer any any information. Um, they're there just to grab what we're trying to say. We 
we told them that we want to stay status quo. Um, they could tell us what change, how it would affect our schools and our students. So we didn't get a whole lot of information. We still don't. Um, uh, as far as the panel knows, uh, they have to tabulate all the all the information that they got in the last two three weeks here and then present it to cabinet. But as far as we know, this we don't. That's why in, in transformational change, the big question is why. What is the point? There's no clarification on the information on the report that makes us want it to change. They they haven't indicated clearly that this is just about money. There's lots of talk about money and the budget situation this year. The timing certainly lends itself to that conversation. And maybe legitimately if there's money wasted, but they won't even go that far. And as far as nobody has ever indicated that the amalgamation of ten years ago saved money. We have not heard that. There's been no evidence of that. It's, it's not the case, and we, there's no evidence that they would save more money by going to one board. There would be some places you save money, and other places you're going to spend more. From my perspective, because if you're all, all on board, and I can see you are, what can we do to help all of you? Is there something specific we can join and do together, or is it all going to be individually submitted, or? I think your voice is the one that's going to matter in all this. Personally, individually, everybody. Yeah, everybody's. Okay. Everybody's in to all three MLAs that we have here. Very important that they hear the voice. Was there any discussion or comment as to how the amount, the last amalgamation, impacted students and staff and community this past time? The, the the comment that came up um, was that there there isn't a lot of research out there about the effect. But if you hear about when they're when they're talking about the results of Saskatchewan, for example, um, sometimes in the province it'll be the graduation rate in Saskatchewan is pretty high enough compared to other provinces. Well, the students that are graduating right now, uh, ten years ago went through an amalgamation process. Maybe that has something to do with it. <coughs> I really hope not. We continue to hear from the ministry representatives that the decision has not been made. And that's, everybody asked that, are we wasting our time to gather? And we continue to hear no. We want to hear what people are saying. I, I wanted to mention that the committee today, the panel, has heard from all the other school divisions that the last amalgamation did take four or five years to get back to the new normal that they referred to. That, now that might not have affected students, but if you affect boards and administrators and teachers, it must have some effect on students. So that was a common, they, they know that. It's four or five years before you get your feet back on the ground. That was a pretty major change. This doesn't have to be, or it could be even greater. Um, but what I would like to talk about is um, when, when things are going well, it's very easy to go to a teacher and, and say, you're doing a great job. When things are not going so well, um, you know, we have a system in place where we can go to a teacher, then an administrator, and then up the ladder if we need to. My concerns lie, as I'm sure many of you <laughs> have the same, is there's where you go, the representation on a local level would be lost. Um, so I have a child who has um, exceptional needs, and you know I bring a lot of issues to, and have brought a lot of issues to the table um, in the past. And I fear for not just my child, but a group in general of um, students who may not be done right by, not by any fault of yours or in our division. It's that you know who am I to go to somebody in Regina and try to get something addressed, and that would be, you know, my
my main concern. So if in fact a rollout of this magnitude happens, we're gonna have to come together as a community to handle that. And not to say that we're, we know this change is going to happen, but if it should, let's be prepared. I'm not prepared to sit by and say, well, you know, my child only has three years left in this community for school, and uh, that's okay, we'll just make do. I'm, I'm gonna stand behind him to get the best quality education. So what is it that I can do moving forward, or what can we do as a community? It's sort of a rhetorical question. Um, what can we do if this change does go out so that our kids don't suffer? That, that happens right now um, along those lines of sometimes there are phone calls that get made straight to uh, for example, the Premier's office um, about not being happy about something and, and the Premier's office calls us and says, okay, uh, you guys need to deal with this, which should have been an earlier step, but if there's no us, then what, right? And I, and I think to answer your question with that is, it would really depend on, okay, what is the governance st structure? Is the governance structure that there's SECs are more involved or, or what would it be? And, and if it was different boards, how would they set that up? So I think that we'd Unfortunately, we'd have to wait a little bit to see what we have. 